This 10th year of Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners. Thanks to all of you, including Brandon Brooks, Hector Bones, Tim Ashman, and our new patron, Tudo. Welcome, Tudo. On this episode of DTNS, what to make of Twitter's rebranding as X, flip phones are about to be big again, and OpenAI's Sam Altman wants to save the world through cryptocurrency. This is the Daily Tech News for Monday, July 24th, 2023 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. From Petaluma, I'm Megan Maroney. From deep in the heart of Texas, I'm Justin Robert Young. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Welcome to Mondays, Megan. They're Megan Mondays now. Oh, mm -hmm. double M. Yes, yeah. Megan Mondays. Uh, thank you for welcoming me. I feel welcomed. You, you sound <laughs> welcomed. <laughs> uh, how are you feeling? How are you feeling? You ready? You, I, I am ready. I have a bit, a little bit of a scratchy throat still, but not like last week when you. Had oh yeah, no, throat. last week you were you were fighting it. Sounds sounds mm -hmm. much better. I'm glad you're feeling better. Thank you. Let us start with some medicinal quick hits. Mm. Bing's AI chatbot has only been available in the Bing app or the Microsoft Edge browser until now, um, but that's all changed. It is available in Chrome, Firefox, and Safari. I wasn't able to make it show up in Opera, so it doesn't seem to be available on all Chromium-based browsers yet, uh, but prompts on the non-Microsoft browsers are different than on Edge. You're limited to 2,000 words as opposed to 4,000, and conversations reset after five turns instead of 43. Spotify hasn't raised its main plan prices since 2011, and that streak is over. In the U.S., Spotify, Spotify Duo goes up $2 to $15 a month. Everything else in the U.S. went up $1. Spotify Premium is now $11 a month. Family is $17, and student is $6. In the U.K., everything gets a pound, a one-pound increase, except the student plan, which stays the same. And in France, an individual plan goes up a euro to 11 euros. Duo goes up two euros to 15 euros. Family plan now costs 18 euros and a student plan will cost six euros. Mon Dieu. Subscribers. I know, exactly. Uh, très bien, Spotify. Uh, obviously, that's the only French phrase I know. Existing subscribers get a one month grace period before the new pricing takes effect. Sacra blue. Uh, also, quick correction I said 43 turns, 30 turns on Microsoft Edge oh. for the one person who cared. Yeah, I care. Uh, Bloomberg's Mark Gurman reports in his Power On newsletter that Apple is working on a delivery option for anybody who wants to buy a product while shopping at a physical Apple store, but have it sent to their house. Uh, this will possibly start in August. I mean, you could do this on your phone, just on your own, but there's going to be a way to do it not on your phone. Uh, Gurman also says Apple is considering raising the price of the next iPhone Pro's. The regular iPhones, the lower end models would stay the same price. Uh, and he also said Apple expects to ship close to the same number of iPhones this year as last year, which would be kind of a win in a declining smartphone market. The ChatGPT official app is now listed in the Google Play Store. You can choose to have it install as soon as it's available. OpenAI says the app will arrive later this week. I did it. I said install, and, mm. and now I'm waiting. Uh, the Linux Foundation announced plans for the Ultra Ethernet Consortium, the UEC. Now, this won't redo Ethernet. The consortium includes companies like AMD, Arista, Broadcom, Cisco, Intel, Meta, Microsoft, uh, and others. Uh, the group hopes to develop the Ethernet standard to improve efficiency. So this isn't about speed. This is about efficiency as networking workloads have been increasing. Let's talk saving the world. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman's cryptocurrency project, the WorldCoin Foundation, is rolling out its services worldwide, except in the United States. Kind of. WorldCoin is meant to provide identity validation with a focus on, in their words, distinguishing humans from AI online. It also aims to increase economic opportunity and foster democracy. You can download the WorldCoin app in the App Store, even if you're in the US. Uh, then it'll ask you where you are, and you can schedule a visit to a nearby location that has what they call WorldCoin orbs. Uh, these are little iris scanners that you go to link your iris to your account, and that creates a verified identity for you. That way you prove you're not a bot. You, you, a person, went to the store and linked up your identity. Now, 
despite not technically on paper being available to people in the U.S., not meant for people in the U.S., there are orbs available at co-working spaces in New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Miami, uh, as well as places outside the U.S. There are orbs available in 35 cities across 20 countries. During its beta, which it's been doing before today's big worldwide launch, it was giving new users 25 tokens just for signing up. It says it has signed up more than 2 million individuals across 30 countries. Uh, Justin, I don't think a lot of people realize this was a, a thing Altman had before he became famous for OpenAI. What, what do you make of this? I think that this is very famous because Sam Altman did open AI <laughs> because like you pointed out, this is something that was there before it got X amount of press. And I believe it was covered here on DTNS, but that was at the height of the cryptocurrency craze. Obviously the cryptocurrency craze has cooled and now open AI is one of the most famous companies in the world of tech. And so a plan that, involves uh sam altman is going to get a lot of attention i don't particularly have a lot of high hopes for world coin saving said world but god bless megan it does does feel like it's it's a little bit of like uh an old-fashioned two-year-old old crypto idea in a way it does yeah i mean it kind of reminds me of like 2019 when facebook had its own coin remember that that disappeared i think that was 2019 um I I signed up too. I downloaded the app and uh, I even made a appointment to get oh, my really? scanned by an orb <laughs> and in San Francisco. Did you make an appointment in LA? I have not made an appointment yet uh, okay. because because I'm in LA, it's like an hour and a half away right, oh, right yeah. now. Yeah. So I want to wait until it's like a 30 minutes away, which will be a different time of day. To also, <laughs> Tom's, Tom's apathy to the suffering of the world is palpable. Also, I don't care about the world. That's true. I yeah. know. Or are you just protecting your eyeballs? Also, no, I am following the rules. It says on the website, world coin tokens are not intended to be available to individuals or companies who are residences of or located incorporated or have a registered agent in the U.S. or other restricted territories. Uh, I just want to get that orb on my eyeballs. That's all I want. You just want that <laughs> sweet orb. I mean, I think it is solving, like seriously, I think it is solving. It is an attempt to solve a legitimate problem, which is uh, crypto. The crypto world is full of scams. It's very hard. I mean, everything that we were promised about it is um, the problem is that we don't know who people are. Like the anonymity of it is, is a challenge. So I, um, even Sam Altman says, you know, I admit that having to scan your eyeballs is a little creepy, but also, I mean, I want a way to tell the difference between me and a robot. I mean, yeah, like you don't, I mean, you don't know if I'm a robot right now, do you? How would you know? Uh, That's a very good point. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Tom, you, you would have to revisit whatever uh, uh, compensation has happened now that Megan's a full timer if she's a robot. That's, <laughs> that's a thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I will say Sam Altman is now a more respected voice in terms of automation and bots post uh, open AI. And I, I do think that there is if you are a crypto long hauler, and I know many are, then trying to figure out what lessons were learned from the first boom and bust is critical. Uh, if part of that was that you didn't know who your stakeholders were and that you were looking at rampant pump and dump stuff beyond just influencers, but also by way of bots and stuff like that, then this is a step forward. I don't know if this is the solution though. Yeah. I, I look at this and I, I see, uh, yes, it's got Altman. He has some credibility behind it. Uh, it's got a very interesting way of verifying identity by tying, tying Iris uh, to a blockchain uh, related identity. And that gets me what? I think that's the big thing missing here is like, and what can I do with that? Because these sort of vagaries about democracy and economics are very similar to other cryptocurrencies that are like, step one, get our cryptocurrency, step two, question mark, step three, profit, right? Uh, so I've, I've yet to see more from WorldCoin than other similar operations about the practicalities of how this is going to work. Uh, uh, one, one last thing here before we move on. Sam uh, uh, Altman is not compensated at the level that a lot of other CEOs are for open AI. And despite the fact that they are explosive right now, there is not the same financial incentive for Altman to just kind of like understand, okay, I got here. Now I'm rich. 
So I am curious to anything else that he does outside of it, because that will likely be the place where he's able to cash in a gigantic chunk of change. Yeah, because that looped money will only last for so long. I know you can only wear so many double pop <laughs> collars. Yeah. Uh, Samsung's Unpacked launch event takes place this Wednesday, July 26th. Uh, they are expected to talk about the two new foldables, mostly. Uh, Galaxy Z Fold 5, Galaxy Z Flip 5. The Flip 5 will reportedly have a much bigger cover display. That's the display you see when the device is folded. Uh, it's also sp expected to support a full keyboard, have more widgets, and possibly even full app support on the cover display as well. And that brings us to Allison Johnson's article on The Verge called Flip Phones Are Having a Moment and All Eyes Are on Samsung Now. Why flips and not larger fo foldables? That's my question. The Galaxy Fold is not likely to get significant improvements um, other than maybe being thinner, like we'll get a better hinge. The, the Honor Magic and the Google Pixel Fold also already have those. Instead, Johnson focuses on flip style phones. These are similar to the old flip phones that we all remember. They unfold into a modern smartphone size rather than a tablet size. And up until now, the outer screen when folded on these smaller models was about as capable as a smartwatch. The Motorola Razor Flip changed that with a more capable cover screen. Uh, looks like Samsung is about to do the same. And with the phone being below $1,000, if Samsung keeps it there, it's something more people can afford. What do you think, Justin? Is Johnson right? Is this the moment of the flip? <laughs> I, I think I am not uh, the target demo particularly for, for that, as at least it appears based on their marketing that Samsung is targeting this to Gen Z and below. Uh, uh, the concept of a smaller phone uh, that folds out and has larger features is attractive. I wonder, though where this entire genre goes obviously there is a market for it and samsung really 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 wants to plant their flag there because it is something that you know let's say apple has not dared to come near yet so i i i wonder about it at a thousand I think it it screams this is a great phone that you get comped when you sign on to your new cell phone provider in that range or in the, the, the 500 and above range. But then again, it's been a while since I bought a phone that's not an iPhone. So maybe this is just normal. Yeah, I feel like this is probably get, getting to be pretty normal. I, I think you're right about the flip uh, really targeting a younger audience. Uh, every Korean drama I see, almost all of them are Samsung sponsored, you know, product placement wise, and they all use the flip. I rarely see someone using the Galaxy Fold because uh, the flip looks cool and you can pop it in a purse and you can pop it in a pocket. And uh, it's it is the the handy phone that you can sell to anyone partly because the price is under $1,000 uh, and, and partly because it's smaller, right? And so you can sell that as an advantage where the folds, even the Pixel Fold and the Honor are still kind of big. Uh, so I, I, I feel like what we should see from Samsung is a much more capable razor flip like flip. I think these are probably going to be the more popular foldables uh, as we go forward. If Samsung really wants to shake up this market, they sell this thing for like $700, $800. Just take a loss on it and just really capture things. I don't expect them to do that, though. Yeah. Think, Sorry, go ahead. I was just going to – I was going to say that I think the flip phone is like really just branding, right? Because, I mean, I think flip – is their new word for foldable because foldable like seems uncool and no, no one's like, you know, really hit that market and had everyone, you know, everyone does not feel like they need a foldable phone, but flip phone has that like nostalgia to it. Like the, yeah. you know, it's like, again, it's not directed at us. It's directed at Gen Z and the idea of like a world before you had the internet on your phone also like a flip phone. <laughs> I mean, that's not what these phones are, but like, that's what a flip phone was. It was like, you could call people and maybe you could take a tiny picture of someone and send them a text if you had a lot of time. But, you know, it's, they're just foldable phones. Well, yeah, I, I do think that there is a meaningful difference in terms of use case for the foldable versus the flip. The fold is something where it's almost a competitor to, an, you know, a, a tablet or an iPad. I mean, it is a competitor to those. And, and being able to run multiple apps so it feels a little bit more computer desktop-y, that's, that's what Samsung is going for with that. That is a higher-end device, and you're probably going to be paying – in in the you know uh, 15 and up range for a device like this this is more of a give it to your kid device it looks cool and 
Tom, to your point, I think that we've materially lost something in movies and television since we've moved away from a flip phone. That is something that that mm. you dramatically can represent. A, a call has ended that that our character doesn't like by them Snap snapping the phone down or a cool guy kind of like running it across their face so it kind of just like folds down by itself there's a lot of dramatic acting uh, uh, capability <laughs> with 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 a flip phone that does not exist for a flat tablet Having what about like using... an extended antenna? Like you remember that? Now we're talking. Like, just... <laughs> now we're talking. Like a totally unnecessary antenna to activate 5G. You're on LTE to <laughs> pull that thing out. Um, having used the Pixel Fold for a couple of weeks now, I have to say I am sold on foldable. There are kinks that need to be worked out. Uh, not the least of which is the price, but the ability to just use it as a phone in candy bar, bar style when I want and then say, oh, you know what? I really want to see this on a bigger screen and then just unfold it and start using the bigger screen and you've got a small tablet form factor. This this is going to be the way. It's just a matter of when Apple does it. Hmm. Once Apple does it, then then, then everybody will say yeah. that they want it. Yeah. yeah. And, and everybody then all, who owns it now, the five years worth of to super be fans can be very like, angry and be I've upset. had foldables for years now. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, folks, if you have a thought about something on the show, uh, but you didn't know our email address, let me fix that right now. Here it is. Email us feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. Microblogging is seemingly anybody's game these days, uh, specifically because I'm forced to call it microblogging and not just Twitter. Uh, Instagram made a big splash by launching threads. Uh, it's now in the process of seeing if it can hold on to that big initial audience. Today, TikTok entered the competition, launching a text option alongside photo and video. Now, it's a little more Tumblr than Twitter, I suppose. Let's you add stickers and music and background colors. But why do so many companies feel they can get a piece of that Twitter action? Well, because Twitter's parent company, X, keeps doing things just like this that I wish we didn't have to talk about, but sadly, we do have to talk about it. Over the weekend, X chairman Elon Musk announced that the company would bid adieu to the Twitter brand and gradually all birds, saying goodbye to all birds, wow. <laughs> not all birds, but all birds. <laughs> Monday, Twitter bird logos began being replaced by a new interim X logo. X.com now redirects to Twitter.com as well. Twitter CEO Linda Yaccarino posted that X is the future state of unlimited interactivity centered in audio, video, messaging, payments, banking, creating a global marketplace for ideas, goods, services, and opportunities. Powered by AI, X will connect us all in ways we are just beginning to imagine. Yeah, there was a longer version <laughs> of that sent as a, a memo as well, but it's a uh, it's a very very lofty. Um, as with all Twitter changes, a Mastodon influx has begun. Uh, Mastodon has gone from 30,000 monthly active users back in September to a peak of two and a half million in November after Elon Musk took over Twitter. Uh, it had declined back down to 1.7 million, still up from 30,000 quite a bit at the beginning of this month. Uh, but they're saying it's uh, back up around 2.1 million uh, as of today. No word on how Threads and Blue Sky are doing. Uh, Justin, what should we make of Twitter rebranding as X? Before we get to all that, let me just say that one of the last times that I was on this show, I pre-bought my uh, uh, what is happening with threads, what went wrong with you threads, did? tickets. I'm feeling very good about my investment. Uh, <laughs> let's talk about this. So it, it's hard to get into this without bumping into the very, very personal feelings that people have about Elon Musk as a human and as an entity in their lives. He, he sort of clouds out all of this. But if we are to attempt to strip that out and look at this plainly, it is clear that he spent $44 billion on a company that had a hard time making money and that had far outstripped its capacity to make money with its staffing and was looking to generate ad sales based on real estate that they would create through engagement. That was never going to be a $44 billion company. And Elon, after trying to wrestle for a discount, uh, wound up having to pay that because that was what he initial uh, offered initially. 
he needs to figure out a way to make this profitable. And he said from the very beginning that this was going to be the idea, that this would be the everything app, a similar to WeChat in China, everything app. Do I think that that's what America wants? That when America closes its eyes, it sees the gossamer outline of an everything app that it desperately needs? No, I don't. But that's his plan to do it. And I think he's going to start with something that goes back to his roots. And that's payments, online payments. He made his money with PayPal. And I think he sees community as a way that he could have people put money on this platform. And every time that you send it hither and yon, they collect some portion of it. And if he can make that attractive to people, if he can put it into places for which you actively want to send money to your friends, then that alone would probably put it on better financial footing and sure financial footing than Twitter's old business model. That being said, if he's going to abandon the ubiquitous branding of Twitter, Tom, can we petition here for DT in a style guide? Can we just refer to microblogging as Twitter now that there's Mastodon ah. Twitter and there's X Twitter? <laughs> like there's, we could just Twitter. Twitter to mean microblogging? I mean, microblogging? like if he's not going to yeah. use it, we right? all want, like, they're just all tweets now. They're all Twitters. Yeah. That I tweeted on threads. Yes. I, I, I was using Twitter. Which one? Blue Sky. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like people in the Midwest, like, oh, like I was having Coke. What kind of Coke? Pepsi. Like they, they, cause everything's Coke. That's a Southern thing. That's not a, that's not a Midwest thing. Oh, what? Well, we say popper. It so. is. Sorry. Texas. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm an East coast elitist. I don't care. <laughs> so, but is there anything like that that still exists? Like, I mean, obviously like band-aids or like, I mean, you know, all those companies Kleenex, still. TiVo. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, do you, you, I mean, you're, you're branded an old person. If you say like, I'm going to, yeah, that, nobody uses really, TiVo anymore. You're going to yeah. just record mm -hmm. it. Um, I don't know. I don't want to believe that it's true, but I also didn't want to <laughs> believe that I was going to lose my blue check, which was my badge of honor to the world. And that seems to be true. So I, I don't know. It's, um, yeah, Listen. I don't want to, I don't want a super app. The only thing, the only things I'll say to the thing, to the folks I've been, I've been seeing comment on this is, Everyone overestimates how angry people stay. People are like, how who would ever trust X with their with their financial information? If they provide a compelling app platform, which is a big question, as Justin just mentioned, uh, people will trust them. Do we are talking about Samsung having a big phone announcement this Wednesday? Remember in 2016 when several people were like, Samsung's done for. Those note fires are no one's gonna yeah. buy a Samsung phone anymore. Not only did they buy Samsung phones, but the note survived for many, many years after that. Uh, people forget very quickly if the product is good. That could happen with X. I'm not saying it's guaranteed, uh, especially if Musk gets tired and goes back over to SpaceX and Tesla and Yaccarino's running the thing and it, and it becomes less of a, you know, regular, let's surprise everybody with a, a weird half-baked rollout of a, of a logo situation. Yeah, but but all right, can we just say this? Like, I, I do find it fascinating that what is otherwise just a conversation about a branding pivot and adding on new features to an already popular app turns into this psychodrama yeah. of, of Elon Musk. Like I, I, it is, it is insane to me that we have to dive into not Elon Musk's psyche, but what everybody has modeled Elon Musk's psyche in their own heads. Do we even talk about this kind of stuff? Yeah, it, it's partly the personality he's cultivated, right? But it's also partly uh, the way he goes about doing things. Even even now, with Linda Yaccarino in charge, if she had said, "Guess what? In two weeks, we're changing the branding. We're gonna. I know you're gonna miss the bird. We're gonna do a send off of the bird, but it's gonna be called X. It's gonna be great." This would have gone down much differently than midnight tweets on Saturday. Uh, get, give me your X logos, right? Like there's a way to roll this out that minimizes the drama, but Musk tends to do it to maximize I mean, the drama. And and one might say that is a feature, not a bug in terms Perhaps. Of, of being able to, to make sure that he gets his version of it out, even if it is just repeated in SpongeBob uppercase and lowercase <laughs> uh, uh, from his adoring public. But 
I would say if, if, if Yaccarino did that, there's just as much of a world in my head where she gets tarred and feathered as being a puppet and an idiot and, and blah, 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 blah. Like, certainly, certainly. But I, I don't think you have the, the huge as huge of a house on fire reaction. Yeah. Uh, uh, that being said, I do think that this is by all accounts, the end of an era for the Twitter brand, what, what, yeah. what the Twitter brand has lived and, and been a huge part of uh, the the media world, the politics world, whatever happens past now, it is on X time. Uh, uh, fly away, sweet bird. May I? Yeah. May I see you on the other side? For many years, I resisted saying tweet. I just said post. Post on Twitter. Why? I think I'm, I think I'm going back. I just thought it sounded silly. I got over it, but I think I'm going back. Post on. Uh, X. You don't want to. You don't want to call them X's. That's what not Elon particular. I don't want to call them skeets or X's or toots <laughs> yeah. or any of it. Oh, it's yeah, it's, posts yeah. is good. Just um, it's a post. I guess all my exes will live in Texas as long as I'm <laughs> as long as you're there. Yeah. yeah, if they locally store them. All right, let's check out the mailbag. All right, let's. Uh, so this comes from Thor. He says, just wanted to mention a useful tool I've been using lately called find.com. That's P-H-I-N-D. It's an LLM powered search engine focused on developers. It seems to be made by a small startup and they're actively exper experimenting with using chat GPT or their own model. There is some small text at the beginning of each response that says what model they're using to generate the answer. Currently, their search acts more like an AI agent that prompts itself to get to the goal you set in the initial prompt and asks you for the user, you the user, for input when it needs clarification. It's free and requires no registration. So I say, give it a shot if you haven't yet. That's what Thor says. I'm, I'm not endorsing it, but I'm going to try it. <laughs> have, have it make that small script that you've never taken the time to write yourself. So using the APIs of the various models and then uh, mixing and matching to see what it, it it can give you is a very interesting and meta, not Facebook, but just the word yeah. meta way of doing things. <laughs> Personal search enabled assistant for programmers. Hmm. Yeah. So so you get the best of all possible models when you use this. Right. That's kind of cool. Like Thanks, Thor. Yeah, that piano joke. Like I, 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 I tried to use Find to program and I couldn't. But I couldn't, you know, it was the piano with a joke I didn't know how to program before. You know. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> yes, you're welcome. <laughs> when did when did you <laughs> I, I can't play the violin either? Um, there's okay. another joke about a violin that I can't remember. Uh what I can remember is to thank <laughs> Justin Robert Young for being here. Mr. Justin Robert Young, my friend. Uh, what do you got going on these days that involves me and is coming in September? Uh, we are hard at work on the next season of Know a Little More since uh, Dog and Pony Show came on board to uh, help uh, with with the show. We've had a really, really good time. You can go back and listen to the episodes from last season. But uh, this year, uh, or this fall rather, we're going to have a bit of a theme. And I'm very excited because we are we are getting drafts of it now, and it sounds awesome. You guys are really going to want to see it. Just go ahead and follow. Know a little more wherever you listen to podcasts. I was very excited at the final cut of episode one, which goes up first week of September. Uh, and so I sent it to a friend of mine to preview. And then I saw that our editor, Amos, was so excited that he just tweeted how excited he was uh, about it. Uh, like, we didn't ask him to do that. He was just no. like, couldn't help himself. No, so. yeah, we we had just finalized the first episode of of, of the next season. And, and it did sound great. And I don't know. I'm thrilled. Yeah. So uh, go get yourself prepped uh, at knowalittlemore.com. Patrons, stick around for the extended show, which will include more half jokes about pianos and programming for me. <laughs> it's good day, Internet. We're going to talk about how the brother of the founder of failed cryptocurrency company, FTX, wanted to buy a country just to make genetically enhanced humans. You know, same old story, as you do genetically enhanced <laughs> that's, humans. That's not a half joke either. That's no. literally the story. Yeah. That's a full story. <laughs> Uh, you can also catch the show live Monday through Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 2000 UTC. Find out more about that at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We're coming back tomorrow explaining what soccer legend Lionel Messi's exclusive deal with Major League Soccer means for Apple TV+. Plus. Charlotte Henry is joining us then. Talk to you tomorrow. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. 
Retirement Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>